I'm gonna share with you the best appointment booking app right now. So if you're someone who is looking for a good scheduling app, or you're looking to book in a bunch of appointments directly into your calendar, then this is for you. So this is something where I've tried and tested so many different apps out there. I was using Calendly for a really long time, and look, it's decent, but there is also a cost to it as well. And it's also an extra service or an extra tool and a different place that you need to log into. So my favorite tool for this right now as a calendar booking system is actually Google Calendar and the new features that they've added in there. And that's what I'm gonna share with you. So if you've got a Google account, even a free Google account, you've got access to this right now, but there is also a paid or a more pro version to unlock more features if you're on one of Google's paid accounts. And while you can do a lot of what I'm gonna show you in the mobile app version, the Google Calendar app, you do get much more control and it's easier to use if you're managing this on desktop. So I'm over on the Google Calendar website now, calendar.google.com, and I'm signed in to a free Gmail account, free Google account. But to enable this booking system, we wanna come up here under month, and we wanna make sure that we've got here, show appointment schedules. So then all we need to do is come over here to create, and then we can create in here an appointment schedule. So on the free version, you can only have one appointment schedule, but if you wanna have multiple schedules for different types of calls and different types of bookings and things, then that's where you will need to be on one of the paid plans, but I'll cover more of that as we go through. So we're gonna choose here appointment schedule, and then in here, we can give this a name. So we go call with Justin. We can set our duration, so how long this call that people can book in for is. So we've got a bunch of presets here, or we can choose a custom length of time. I'm gonna leave this here as an hour. We then get to set our general availability here. So whether this is something that's gonna repeat, so we're offering these call times every week, or if these are maybe a one-off that people can make for a set period of time, we can customize all of that up here. So let's say that we don't wanna take calls on a Monday, we can remove Monday. Let's say that we don't want them on also a Friday, but we can also get a little bit more granular with this as well. So if we hit the plus here, we can add another time period for this day as well. So let's say that we wanted to add another time slot that finished at 8 p.m. at night and maybe started at seven. So there was an extra call time slot in there available as well. We can see that that's appeared here now for Thursdays. We can also specify our time zone here for the calls. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that mine is selected. And then we can dial this in even further with the scheduling window. So the default here is that people can book these calls 60 days in advance with up to four hours notice before they're booking. But obviously we can change all of this so we can have it so it starts now. So this bookings could come from now or we can have a clear start and end date if we'd like to select that. We can again customize how far out people can book ahead of time. And likewise, we can control the minimum amount of time and before the appointment starts here as well, the default four hours. We also have the ability to adjust your availability. So for specific dates, you could deviate from what's happening up here as well. So say for example, there's a specific Thursday coming up where you don't want that nighttime call available, then we could rule that out in the settings here. We're also able to do things like add in a buffer for your call times as well. So there's at least a 30 minute gap or break between calls. We can specify the number of bookings per day as well and whether our guests that are booking calls can invite other guests. So you can see now that this has a lot of the core functionalities that a lot of those other tools like Calendly has. But again, this is built directly in to Google Calendar, which is awesome. So if you're already using Google Calendar, it's gonna be really easy to integrate this into your workflow all from the same place, same tool. But you also have the ability here, and this one here is really important, to check your availability across multiple calendars. If you're someone like me who has a personal calendar, a work calendar, family calendar, as well, then we can make sure there's no conflicts across all of those when people are booking calls. And then down the bottom here, we can specify which calendars we're going to look at for availability when you're booking. Now, if you're on the free version, you can only have this for one specific calendar. So if you're someone like me, then this is one of those times where you will wanna look at upgrading to a Google Workplace plan where this is included in there for multiple calendars. But if you're just running one calendar or you want one specific calendar just for this booking stuff, then again, this is do everything you need. Once we got all of that keyed in, we can just hit next. And then we can set a location here for where these calls are gonna take place. So it says here, select how and where to meet. So just like we're creating a regular calendar invitation, we could choose a specific location, phone call. We could say that it's going to be disclosed to them later. Or the one that we use now is just Google Meet for video conferencing. Again, having that all integrated in here. And it's going to automatically create a unique link for that person 
person for that specific call as well. We can then add a description here. It says this description for the call is going to appear on the booking page when people are booking a call, but also in your confirmation emails. So yes, this does send out confirmation emails when someone books a call as well. We can also customize up the booking form itself. So when people are actually booking a call, we can gather some information around who that is so that it shows in our calendar, but also so that it can gather extra information that we might want for that call as well. So the default here is first name, surname, and email address. But you can see here that we can add another required field as well if we'd like to. Now I mentioned this earlier, but there is the ability here to also receive payments before a call as well. So if you're someone who's offering coaching calls or you're consulting, then you can actually take payment at the time of booking. So that way you don't need to deal with that stuff. You know that people are paying you up front for your calls instead of trying to chase that stuff up later. So just jumping across to my paid Google account now to show you what this section looks like. If we go to payments and cancellation policy, then in here, all we need to do is go to settings here to connect our Stripe account and we're able to receive payments via Stripe. And the last option we got here is the booking confirmation and reminders. So by default, if you're on the free version, again, you can't turn this off. The calendar invitation is automatically sent out for you at the time that someone books a call. But if you want to have extra follow-up emails and reminders set at different periods of time, then you'll need to be on the paid version. And again, this is here what it looks like on the paid version. We can have email reminders that go out and we can choose when they are. So the default is one day before, but we can also add extra reminders in here as well. And once that's done, we can see we've got this pop-up here, a bookable appointment schedule, call with Justin. We can open up our booking page here to preview it. We've got a share link here where we can copy that link to send it out. It shows us that this call is gonna be done over Google Meet in this case. There's a booking form capturing first name, surname, and email. And it's checking my personal calendar here to see what times are available from those that we've specified. So let's open up the booking page here. So this is what other people will see when they go to book a call with you. We can see the days, they can see the times, they can go ahead and pick the time they want. They'll then go ahead and type in their first name, their last name, their email address, they'll book and that call will then be booked in your calendar. So personally, I think this is absolutely awesome to have this built into Google Calendar without the need for Calendly, without the need for any of those other tools or apps. For most people, I think the free version of this is gonna be great, but if you're already on a paid Google plan, then you can probably unlock all of those extra features anyway. Now, one thing that really annoyed me with this when they first released it out, they have fixed this now, but I wanna show you how. Once you've created an appointment schedule, it would show up in your calendar. So you can see we've got these two appointment schedules down here based on that appointment booking schedule that we just made. It shows in your calendar. So if you're like me, when your calendar is crazy and it's full of stuff, and then you're seeing these booking times as well as open bookings for people to book, it can be easy to confuse that with things that are actually booked in, not that there's a schedule open for people to book in. So there is a setting up here that you're likely gonna wanna turn off once you've created these appointment schedules. It's up here under where it says month with the drop down arrow. And then there's a little checkbox here, show appointment schedules. So we can hide that. We don't need to see them once they're made. Maybe we need to see them when we need to customize them up, but we don't need to see them every day in our calendar. So I love that this feature was added. This was one of the last things holding me back from using it. And if you've got a crazy calendar set up with everything in there like I do, then you'll understand how annoying that would have been. But once they implemented that ability to show and hide those from your calendar, that was it. That's now what I use. So that is my top pick for best calendar booking system right now and you've probably already got access to it. As always, there is a bunch of other resources and links in the description box below to help you even further. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.